Hello, welcome back to a new video from Farlingo and this time we will talk about pedestrians in residential area. A Matthew asked me how to deal with pedestrians while exam if you go through a crossing and a pedestrian wants to cross as well. So what to do? Let's talk about this right now. Here we go. In this video we will talk first about how to do with pedestrians if you're in a narrow road and you have to pass them by. Then we will talk what to do if you get to a crossing with pedestrians, so which basic rules actually do apply. And then we will pick up one small example, we change the perspective how you would see it if you pass through a crossing and then how to deal with that specific situation. So let's go, we've got no time to waste. You are driving right now in exam and this time Peter is walking by. Now it is quite easy because Peter probably has seen us. So if you drive carefully, you might give him a little bit more space, but you can drive forward. This might change if Peter is not noticing us. Now Peter is walking in the same direction we are driving. So it might be that he's not noticing us. In that case we have to be very careful. In case it's possible, again we give him a little bit space, but if not you should be very slow. Maybe even walking speed, if you can't give him more space than 1 meter 50, pass carefully and then go ahead. So be aware if a pedestrian can't see you. Then you have to be specifically careful. Be prepared to brake, so be over the clutch, over the brake, that in case that he might pass by, you're still able to brake. That might be quite easy, but what happens if Peter wants to cross the road? Who has priority right now? A lot of people want to be friendly and start to slow down and actually invite him to pass. But that's not a good recommendation what you should do because the examiner might think, hmm, maybe he doesn't know the rule. The driver has priority, so don't invite him. Just go ahead. But what should I do if the guy actually is walking by? Obviously, in that situation, you have to brake. We can't risk the life of the pedestrian just because we are in right. To summarize it, if you want to go straight ahead and a pedestrian wants to cross your way, you have priority. The pedestrian has to wait. You have to be careful, but you can go straight ahead. In case he's still walking, obviously you have to be able to brake and you have to stop, but please don't invite him. But now let's talk about what happens if Peter is waiting at a crossing and you want to go straight ahead. Who has the priority right now? Hmm, does apply right for left? Or is it something different right now? In that case, you are allowed to go first. The pedestrian has to wait. If there is no stop sign, no give priority sign for others, no zebra crossing, you have the priority and you can go ahead. And it doesn't matter if Peter is on the right hand side or on the left hand side. You still want to go straight ahead. Peter wants to cross, but you are still able to go first. The same would be if you turn left or if you want to turn right. Peter has to wait and you're able to go. And how would it be if Peter is waiting on the other side of the crossing? It's the same. Right now, Peter is waiting here. You want to go straight ahead and you're allowed to go first. Peter has to wait and obviously it doesn't matter if he's going from that side in that direction or if he's going from the right to the left. You're allowed to go first. So do you have always priority if they're pedestrians? No, unfortunately not. There is one situation where the pedestrian has priority. Let's have a look. The examiner wants you to turn left and unfortunately Peter is going straight ahead as well. So you're about to cross his way. In that case, Peter has priority. Why? 
because you have to give priority to all the participants you're crossing. So you turn left, Peter is going straight ahead, so Peter has priority in that case. All right, that's quite clear, but does it make a difference if Peter is going up, down or down, up? No, because Peter is going straight ahead this time and you're turning left, you're still crossing his way, so you should wait here until he's passing and then you're allowed to go. Obviously, all this applies as well if you turn instead of left to the right. So you want to turn right and it doesn't matter if Peter is coming from up, going down or passing the road from here to there. You have to give him priority even if you turn right. Now the question is where would you stop? Would you stop here or would you go ahead and wait here? The best option would be waiting in front of the crossing. Why? Because if you proceed and you're driving into the crossing, wait here and Peter maybe takes a long time to pass, you're in risk that someone from the right is passing by while you're waiting and then you're taking the priority of someone from the right. So better you wait in front of the crossing until he totally passes and then go left. But if the rules are that easy, why is it then that difficult if there's a pedestrian waiting at a crossing and you want to turn? The problem is, if you want to turn left and the pedestrian, in this case Peter, is allowed to go, but he's not going, he's waiting. So what to do in that case? And therefore, we will change now perspective. Let's have a look. The same situation now from a different perspective. You are going towards the crossing and Peter is waiting. He wants to pass but he's staying there watching what you're about to do. So let's talk about the steps you have to do. Probably you know them already. If you want to turn to the left, the first step is looking into the back mirror. After looking into the back mirror, the next step will be looking into your left -hand mirror. Why looking into the left and mirror? Because there might be someone else than just Peter. So have a look to your left and mirror and then obviously put the indicator to the left that everyone knows, even Peter, that you want to turn left. Now you're about to get closer and it's time to break and to change the gear, probably into the first gear. The first gear is the best choice because it's a narrow road and it would be quite recommendable to slowly drive around it and the first gear makes exactly that possible. And then you should start to look if the crossing is free. Therefore I would talk a little bit about something else before we come back how to look into the road. I don't know where you have raced up. But in Germany, children who are visiting the kindergarten get a visit by police and they're explaining how to cross a road. So if you want to cross a road, we teach our children that you have to look first to your left and then check to the right and then check again if on the left is everything free. So why check first to the left and then to the right? Because obviously a car from the left hand side, in that case the green one, is closer to you and the one on the right is more far away. So you should always check first to the left and then to the right. And to be sure, before walking you check double to the left again before you start walking. So in the car it's the same. You should first Drive a little bit ahead to check to the left. In this case, we have a big tree in front of us. So you have to pass the tree, stop there and check to the left if it is free, if there's no one coming. Maybe you will see Peter as well, hopefully. So the next step obviously is looking to your right. You drive a little bit more ahead that you're able to look behind the house if there might be a car from the right. In that case, right for left, the car from the right would have priority. So it's important 
and there I would stop again. And then check again to your left if Peter is still there. And yes, he's still there waiting. Now, what to do? Everything free, the examiner behind you, all the pressure on your shoulders. What do we have to do now? If you drive immediately without taking responsibility on Peter, the examiner will tell you, hey, you will fail because you took priority of Peter, but Peter is not moving. So what should we do in that situation? The best thing is stop here again, have a look at him, turn your head that the examiner has seen it, that you have focused on Peter, and if he's still waiting, you are able to go. But wait, you have forgotten something very important, and that's the shoulder blick. Obviously, before you're passing, you still have to look to your left if there is no one in your blind spot. That would be one solution. But you can as well let Peter pass by and tell him, please pass. That's a very good option, but make sure that there is no car passing by from the right. Because if someone is passing from the right, going straight, Peter has to wait for him, because this car might pass first. So if you tell Peter, hey, I'm giving you priority, just walk, and you haven't noticed if there is coming a car, and Peter is walking, you are responsible for a possible crash and the examiner will tell it even if nothing will happen. So if you say to Peter, yeah, you can pass, make sure that there is the crossing absolutely free for Peter and there is no risk for Peter that he can pass the road. So what to do? Pass a little bit more forward, check if the road is free from the right, free from the front, and then tell Peter to pass, that you're totally sure that he can go without any risk. And if Peter is going in that case, you will have finally everything free and you're supposed to go. That was indeed a very difficult situation and I can tell you, when I'm getting in that situation as a teacher, my brief stops because I hope that my student is doing it good and hopefully I can help you with this video that you will pass your exam even if that difficult situation might appear. So if you think of a different difficult road situation in exam, make it the topic of my next video and describe it in the comments. See you soon!